JT at Rubber City Motoring back with another Impala video. I've kind of been filming these because I know you guys want them. I know that's where a lot of the followers are from. Uh, they, you know, I've been kind of saving these ones too because they are unique. They're no, they don't necessarily apply to my Impala that's sitting here, but they could apply to yours and they, they could apply to mine. So, you know, when you look at all these new cars out there now, any car, like let's take for example, um, if you're a Ford guy, I was just reading about this the other day, the, um, a few years back they made the Boss 302 Mustang. Lots of neat upgrades on that car, direct from the factory. And a lot of times, the, the factory parts that are on that car are, are much better than what you get aftermarket from you know Bob's performance shop wherever it may be because the the factory has to meet certain standards they have to make sure it'll it'll not void a warranty or anything like that and you know you know it's just there's a certain quality level that has to be there another good example is the ZL1 Camaro that came out you know it was still out but the first year it came out I loved it because they said you can take your SS Camaro take a ZL1 shifter bolt it right in there factory warranty it's factory quality, it's not going to be overly loud, it's just like a neat little upgrade, but it is a GM part number attached to it, bolts right onto your car, because it bolts onto every other ZL1 Camaro that's out there. The Impala is not different in that, you know, they, they threw the parts bin at the Impala when they made it. They did leave some things off though, which if you're a Caprice guy, uh, and more specifically the 9C1, the police or the detective version, whatever you want to call it, I've found over the years that they got more parts than the Impala guys did. Now, for whatever reason, I'm sure there's a, one of you out there knows why this was the case, but like a good one was the external engine oil cooler. As far as I know, it wasn't on the Impala. We got the trans cooler, but not the oil cooler. My oil lines run from the filter into the radiator, which, yes, it kind of cools it, but there's not an external cooler like the, the high-performance Caprice police edition had. The other one that's uh, on the Caprice but the Impala didn't get were those green silicone hoses meant for high heat, longer lasting, durability, all that stuff. Now, these ones are cool. My dad picked these up and I gotta do a video on, I've just got Impala Club, uh, North American International, North America Impala SS Ownership Club, whatever the acronym was back then when he got the car. Um, he picked these up these are those sweet wiper blades. Um, let me show you the way they go. And these, it's so cool because these will basically, at speed, they got little airfoils on them to push down on the, uh, the blade here. So they stuck to your window and cleaned your window at speed. They didn't lift off. And these weren't Impala factory. This was, as far as I know, Caprice 9C1 factory. So police stuff. Police packages have always been better, heavy duty, just different things. And that was kind of the basis of the Impala, but I thought it was, it was interesting. Certain things didn't make it. The the one thing though that I want to talk about today though is the front air dam. Now my Trailblazer SS, there was an option, a factory GM accessory, like um, uh, trying to think of a good example, like sometimes GM would sell like uh, grill guards, like you know the bug guard, sometimes they would sell trailer hitch plugins, fancy floor mats, even um, like a DVD upgrade for your SUV. Well, the Trailblazer, one of the accessory items was brake cooling ducts. They actually attached to the front of the, uh, the brake, the fascia, ran to the brake, and then they even had a different backing plate that came with it. I will post a picture throughout this just to show you what I'm talking about. Rare part, you can't get it anymore, and it wasn't really factory. Well, the Impala front air dam is just your standard air dam across the front. I'll show you here in a second what I mean. Well, the Caprice version, the, the 9C1, the, the police one, had actually brake cooling on there. And I have some of the parts. These parts, I don't know how many Caprices they made in this, this package, how many taxi cabs they made if this had it. But, I mean, there had to be a million of them out there, and now you can't really find them. You guys that have them, you know who you are. You use them, you, you, you hoard them, these, these Impala part hoarders. Um, and I wasn't actively looking till recently for these. And uh, one of them, this part right here, 
I have the part numbers for these things, and I I was kind to the community. Uh, I my my eBay saved shirts popped up with this part. Oh my gosh, there it is. It wasn't an arm and a leg. It was like fifteen bucks. I ordered it, like whew, completely lucky. Well, I went back to the channel or the I'm sorry the, the the site and it said there was like four available and my thought was like I should buy them all resell them I go eh whatever I don't want to do that so I posted the link on the the Facebook group they were gone in five seconds now this one here it says this is considered the right hand side and my first thought was okay it goes in place it's a little shorter it doesn't really work how I expect it so what I'm gonna do here is show you um, how this fits and then I'm also going to show you the second part of this setup is a uh, different backing plate as well I have one of these to show you in factory parts probably nearly impossible to find I mean I've been actively searching for years now just off and on and I only have two of the four pieces and really there should be five if you count the center air dam but I don't think that's completely unique but let me show you how these are supposed to work in theory from the factory. It's very, very clever. So I wanted to show you a stock air dam here. It's pretty standard, nothing fancy. It just kind of wraps around there and, and attaches a few points. Let me show you the back side here. These are even getting rare to find, tough to find. I mean, mine's a little, I mean, it's got 200,000 miles, so it's kind of supposed to be more in that position there. I think it might be a little bit loose, which I'll tighten it up here, but that is it. Now let me show you the same angle here, the 9C1 version. And there is your 9C1 version. Completely different. Not even close to what I expected before I even put this on here. If you look, let me see if I can move this over here. I mean, it completely changes how it's supposed to work. And it just it makes a 90 degree turn. You could almost run both, if, but it, it wouldn't work. Like, look at that up there. It's totally different. It just basically squares it off. So what this is supposed to do is, it's supposed to channel air to your brake. So air is obviously rushing. We got the front of the car um, <laughs> that way. That's the front. There's our brake right there. You can see if I can get you a good angle here, how to to view this. So air is rushing past your car. It's hitting that turn right there, blasting that way, and then sending air to your brakes right here. Very, very clever. And I mean, I understand it's just a piece of plastic and it's just diverting air. And I mean, before with the old one, it was a complete block off. But now you have that... Uh, it's just allowing air to get past and then directing it to the brakes. My first thought is maybe they didn't put this on all the cars from the factory because of um, like gas mileage. Maybe because of uh, more trash is going to hit your brakes and they may have more warranty claims or things like that. There had to be a reason and I, I would love to know if anybody has any insight into that. But I want to show you the, the brake piece here next. So you're going to have to go with me on this one because the backing plate I have for the Capri setup, this is actually for the driver side, but you can understand how this works. So you can see the factory backing plate goes all the way around. I mean, it's a big backing plate to keep brake dust and everything off of all your suspension parts. This portion, I can see why they didn't do it from the factory because, I mean, you want brake dust not to ruin your factory components whatever I mean this is so the police car I mean it's it's not as much of a daily if that makes sense as this is like for civilian use so you can see how much smaller this is I mean if I kinda attempt to line this up I mean it, it's it's well over half the size as the the other one and that's to allow that that air to come back there and it even has a, a hole there allow the air to flow through there pretty neat stuff I mean so really you would have the air dam up there directing air this way and then you would have this smaller backing plate to uh, allow more air to hit your your rotor and your your caliper there if it if it reaches that far but pretty slick setup and if you have this on your car 
your Caprice or anything, you might not even know it. And, and if this is on your Impala, well, probably because you uh, you bolted it on there. But overall, pretty slick setup. So I don't have all the pieces to build my own a whole setup yet. But uh, if I ever do get them all, um, yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd probably run them just for fun. Pretty slick, though. Pretty neat setup, if you, I do say so myself. So, if you're looking to do this, it takes two of these, and they are different per side. This is your passenger side, and there's two of these. This is the driver side. So I need a driver side one of these, and a passenger side one of these. The center air dam I don't think matters that much. It looks the same, and this kind of that rounded corner there matches up pretty well so that is how that works on the 9c1 um, if, it, if I'm wrong with that let me know but that's from my research what what that's been on that was not factory on the Impala version it was not factory even on the Caprice it had to be the the police package end of things and then yeah you, you go from there so if you find a wrecked Caprice police edition obviously take these off I mean I would guess that the average salvage yard Probably selling you for about five bucks. Now, taking that off is going to be a little trickier, and the odds of these still being intact after half a million to a million miles of police use, slim to none. And it's sad because, you know, 15 years ago, you probably could have went to any corner drugstore, <laughs> uh, GM dealership, and picked those up with the right part numbers for probably a pretty good deal. So, but who knew, right? So thanks for watching. Appreciate you uh, following along on this little part of the journey. And I'll see you next time. Have a good one.